Good evening, or should I say good afternoon, Mudbugs fans. Welcome to another edition of our Shreveport Mudbugs Media Luncheon. Mudbugs coming off another great weekend. They shut out the El Paso Rhinos back-to-back -back nights, 3-0 uh, on Friday and then 2-0 on Saturday. Mudbugs now currently sit two points behind Lone Star for the race for the second uh, seed in the South Division. Of course, the number two seed would ensure home ice uh, in the opening round, so it'll be important uh, for the Mudbugs to try to catch Lone Star. Uh, Mudbugs take on the Jackalopes this weekend. Mudbugs have struggled uh, against Odessa this season. They're two and four against them, so it should be a fun two games uh, in Odessa this Friday and Saturday, 7-15 puck drops. Some of the highlights last weekend, Simo Bushler uh, picked up the shutout on Friday and then uh, relieved uh, Nikolai Goich in net on Saturday, made a 19 save to complete that shutout. He now leads uh, the North American Hockey League with 24 wins en route to uh, capturing the South Divisional Star of the Week. That's the second time he's won that award. He also has two Goaltender uh, of the Month awards along his belt as well. He's third in goals against uh, as well with a 1.88 uh, goals against. So um, congratulations to Simo Bushler and, uh, and the Mudbucks. Um, here to talk about last weekend series against the Rhinos and this weekend series coming up against Odessa is Mudbugs head coach, Jason Supi Campbell. <laughs> coach Chris, give me the gears here. Coach, can you give us an update on injuries to both lines? Yeah, uh, really everybody's just kind of day to day right now. Um, don't know if we'll have them for Odessa or not yet. So uh, who we got? We got Goich. Uh, um, yeah, like he's still day to day, you know. He hasn't practiced yet, but but again, that's it's not like that's not normal or anything like that. He can easily practice, you know, tomorrow and be ready for the weekend or practice Thursday, pregame skate, you know. So there's plenty of opportunity for him to get ready still, but uh, but as of right now, every, everything's just kind of day to day. Being extra cautious. As you head into this big road trip. Nothing, nothing really changes, you know. This is just another huge weekend on the road against a team that play, has played us really well this year and has always played us well in years past. So um, these guys, again, are still fighting for their lives and, and, and they need two big wins this weekend. So uh, we're in their way right now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a battle. Uh, I think Odessa's played us well here. They play, I think they play even better on their home ice with a lot of good energy and their goaltenders played really good against us this year. So so we've got a full on battle ahead of us and, and we need to be prepared to go in there and be road warriors. When you're talking about their goalie played really well against you, what is it about when you face a hot goalie that kind of stands out from the coach's perspective and them trying to find a hole in that situation? Well, I feel like most goalies we play against, uh, every goalie really in our division, if they can see the puck, they're going to stop it, right? So, so the battle is is trying to get guys to, to get to the net front and get in his eyes and, and get shots through and make sure we're getting shots through and, and good shots to where we're able to deflect pucks or get rebounds because, like I said, they see the first one, they're going to save it. It's that second and third opportunity or, or ones that they can't see that, that are going to end up going in. And, and even on those second and third opportunities, these goalies are, are that good that they're – they're sprawling out and they're trying to make every save they can while their their defense is right there in front of them trying to get you out of there. So it's going to be some dirty goals that we're going to have to score on these guys. You mentioned, you mentioned injuries a minute ago. Is there been about six, six games left on the regular season that left to go? When do you start looking at the health of the players versus you know where you might end up in the standings? Like, I mean, I know you're close enough to home playoff team right now. Where does that kind of stand? Well, It'll always be health of the players, you know. It always, it has been since day one, and it, and it will be uh, until until we're done here, you know. So um, the wins are important, but again, we've got we've got guys just waiting to to get more ice time or get in the lineup on a on a regular basis. So so I'm, you know, if you have a guy that's been in the lineup uh, every game, yeah, you you're gonna miss him, obviously, right? But but at the same time, you've got somebody that's that's really hungry, just waiting to jump in there and do the job too. So, so we'll always just stare on the side of caution with these guys. And um, we've got Amy and uh, 
good, good uh, network of doctors that, that give us advice and tell us what they think. And, and I'm no doctor and I'm no athletic trainer. So, so when just to, uh, we'll see, we'll see, you know, sometimes that's the worst thing you can do. You know, you want to kind of keep guys going in the, keep them in the, you know, their groove and their, their schedule. But uh, again, we'll just, that, that's a day to day thing too, or maybe you give them more time off during the week, but they're playing on the weekends, you know, so we'll, we'll monitor that as we kind of get closer to hopefully solidifying a playoff spot. Well, Bush is, uh, he's a great leader, you know, and he's always just prepared to play. And he does the same thing, he's super consistent. He's always at the rink at the same time. He's always, he's, he's, we bug him because he's so slow with everything he does, right? But, but that's what he does, and that's how he prepares, whether it's practice games, he's just always doing the same thing and mentally preparing and physically preparing himself to, to play games. And, and thank goodness for that, because uh, like on Saturday night, you know, he wasn't expecting to go in. Nico was doing a great job. But next thing you know, he is in there. So, and he did a great job jumping in there. So that, to me, that's just a testament of how, you know, he's a true professional. He's always preparing himself to be the best he can be. Your dad is not just training for a D game, he's training for a B game. Was he here to kind of teach him on those days? Or did he hear when his teams going six goal, four goal, five goal? Was that to keep going from week to week? Or is it? I think I think defensively and just really it's more about the details of the game on both ends of the rank you know uh, if you have good details hopefully you'll score more and hopefully you'll keep the puck out of your out of your net you know they kind of go hand in hand so and it's easy to just really brag on those those small details when you see them over and over again you just gain a lot of good momentum that way so that's that's what I'm looking for down the stretch here is just those those details and our D zone's been good. We've been scoring enough goals, you know. You know, hopefully three, four goals a game is is enough to win a hockey game. You know, if you're if you're playing defense the right way. So uh, we've been doing that lately. But but again, Odessa's got a lot of a lot of firepower. I, I think they've got a lot of guys that can that can score goals and they run and gun. Plus they got that really good goaltender. So they're a dangerous team and it'll be a great test for us on the road. I still, I still think there's pressure, and I still think we, we need to win without putting that focus on just winning, right? It's about the, the process and how you get that win, and uh, you'll usually you take one any way, any way you can get it. But realistically, when you look back at your game, you've got to coach your guys like, okay, we won this game, but look, we got away with this, 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 and this. But then there's other nights where you, you get a big win and everything looks pretty solid. So, so. For me, it's you know we we just there's there's pressure still there, but the focus is on playing the game the right way, and hopefully that'll be good enough for us to to string some more wins together. Yeah, especially first period, you know, like there just wasn't a whole lot of energy there, you know, just that extra step, that extra urgency to get to a puck or get to the net front or hit a guy, you know, just. Mm -hmm just didn't seem like there was that extra energy. It, it almost felt like a little bit, kind of like a playoff game in a way where the two teams are, aren't familiar with each other, but they're feeling each other out, you know? And then finally it started to pick up a little bit, you know? And, and again, the details of our game weren't great either. So there was, there was, it wasn't that quick a pace, you know, of fumbled passes or missed passes, lack of execution, that type of stuff can, can really take the wind out of your sails a little bit. And I just felt like that was lacking mainly in the first period, both nights, but uh, we found a way to pick it up uh, as we usually do. This league, the way it's been, about two or three years, that's all what they are. You see the success over and over and over and over again. It stays the same way, they stay cheap. Would you rather see something, I know at the SEC, you see the next judge is a non division standard. Is there any chance the NHL could do something like that? Would it be a little different that you'd be taking 
someone else in the standings that you wouldn't have the opportunity to play them? So pros and cons with that? Well, I think there's always a chance, you know, like, but especially if they keep adding teams, right? You never know what they're going to do. Like, we may have 10 teams in our division next year. So um, at least that's what it looks like right now. Nine or 10? Well, how many do we have now? Eight? Eight. So nine next year, I guess. Sorry. Nine next year. So, and again, they just added another team uh, in one of the other divisions. So, you know, the, I think there's always a chance, and it all depends on kind of how the league evolves. And from a fan standpoint, I think it's great, you know, to get different teams in here because just different for the fans too, you know. And um, so, but at the same time, you know, with the with the division that we have now, eight teams, that's a healthy that's a healthy eight teams right there, and and you you get some pretty good rivalries, you know, which makes the hockey very exciting too. For the fans, but but it is always nice to see see somebody a little different come in here from a different division. See maybe how they their style of play may be different from the South or whatever the case may be. But uh, again, I, I I don't know that that's going to happen in the very near future. But I think there's always a, a possibility depending on how the league evolves. Thank you, Chet Yoder. Minor Mudbucks fans, we do have our next home stand. It'll be our last uh, home stand of the regular season, April 7th and 8th. It'll be part of our extraordinary uh, weekend to kind of honor Easter weekend. We'll also have uh, a special cookout tailgate on Saturday at 5.30 for our season ticket holders and their guests, so come on out. We'll also have an Easter egg hunt for three various groups, five and under, six through 10, and 11 and up, uh, all part of that uh, pre-game festivities once again on Saturday. Mudbooks will host the Corpus Christi Ice Race in that uh, two-game series. So you want to be sure to get your tickets by giving us a call at 318-636-7094 or by logging on to mudbuckshockey.com. I also wanted to talk about a big benefit for Jason LaFlame, um, you know, one of our beloved DJs who's, who's battling cancer. Um, we're going to have more details coming out soon, but we're going to have um, the opportunity for you guys to bid on two tickets to a Nashville at Dallas game uh, April 3rd uh, at American Airlines. And you'll be able to meet Roman Yossi uh, after the game, take a photo with him and you know, sign, get stuff autographed and signed. So it'll be a lot of fun April 3rd. Um, but we're going to have some details on how that's going to be distributed. You're going to have a chance to bid on those two tickets. And all uh, that money from that bid will go out to Jason LaFlame and his family. So. Uh, be part of the Jason LaFlame sticking it to cancer. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and it'll be a, a great event and a great cause, of course. Uh, moving on to our player portion today's Mudbugs Media Luncheon. Uh, he scored his 11th goal uh, last weekend. He's got six points in his last five games. He's been one of our great leaders, second full season as a Mudbug. Mudbugs alternate captain, Hayden Nickel. <laughs> Uh, went to St. Baldrick's and got it buzzed right off. So me, Soupy, and Big Muskie all got matching haircuts. Well, the Muskie got the same haircut? Oh, yeah. What did they do with all, how many birds nests were made with the remnants of his haircut? I don't know. I heard like a hundred, something crazy. Do you feel faster, sleeker, cooler? Uh, I am cold all the time. I didn't realize how cold it is in this rink without all of my hair on my head. I'm cold all the time. That's my only benefit from it. What are some of the reviews you've gotten on it? Is it positive, negative? Uh, actually, the lady that cut my hair said I looked just like Rafe Cameron from Outer Banks, so I took that as a huge compliment. Then I shared it with the guys in the room, and they said that was not true. <laughs> so, mixed feelings for sure. <laughs> yeah. So we had a promotion at St. Baldrick's and the, like, you donate and they use the hair for kids that have cancer that need wigs and that stuff. So we did it for them and it was a great promotion and great cause for sure. This organization does so many things like this. You know, when you first found out about coming to Mud Bugs and being a part of this, you wanted to play hockey, you knew I would offer some tough stuff. How much has this been kind of Uh, 
Uh, honestly, it means a lot, like being able to be out in the community and the people that come here and support us every night and just to support them where, wherever they need means a lot. Like they are the livelihood of the shrink and us. Like and without the fans, like we wouldn't be here. So it means a lot to go out and help them. Honestly, uh, it's just like the work away from the rink, like in the gym all the time, shooting pucks and then practice. Like I knew it was like to be the guy battling in and out my first year and you never forget that. So that sticks with you forever. You know what it takes to try and crack the lineup and you just got to prove yourself night in and night out because even the guys that sit out are, can play every night in other places and can play every night here. So you know they're right on your heels trying to take your job. So. Just riding the wave, honestly, like just with the ups and flows and don't let your highs get too highs and your low get too low. And just knowing that last year not winning is not good enough here. And so trying to come out on top and not start the year how we did and end the year on top. Uh, Odessa is a great team. They have great players all throughout their lineup, great defense, and great goaltending. So you just you can't overlook anybody in this division. Every team in this division can beat any team any night. So you just you can't take a shift off or a period off. You have to be going all the time. guys over there <laughs> raising their hand like Drake Morris any day of the week Goody even in my sleep probably my sister too <laughs> Steeler any day of the week Danzy a good amount of time I think the only person I wouldn't fight is probably Morgie Gavin Morgan <laughs> would be the only guy that I wouldn't fight <laughs> No, I have not. I don't know if phones were around back then, so I don't know. <laughs> what you're talking about. It's in black and white. It is. It's hard to see. Yeah. yeah. fans this Friday and Saturday public skate from 6 to 9 so come on out uh, be a part of that and have some fun here at George's Pond in Hirsch Coliseum while the Mudbugs are on the road. Moving on in our player portion today's Mudbugs media luncheon. He's a fourth year Mudbug. He's had six points in his last four games. He's got 19 goals on the season. Second year Mudbugs captain Garrett Steele. Thank you Chet. <laughs> no, I guess I was the only smart one, and Hato, I shouldn't have let him borrow it because he said he'd beat me in a sleep, but you know, I guess I'll let him wear it for now. You didn't get, you didn't get in on the challenge either, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I'm just, just trying to keep it until playoffs for now. <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it's been a topic of conversation in the locker room, for sure. Uh, some pretty heated conversations, I'd say. But um, we have it narrowed down. I don't want to spoil anything, so we'll, we'll see when we get there. Shouldn't your vote kind of count more than the <laughs> oh. Yeah, you, you would think so, but uh, I, I like to get people like to talk over me a lot, so <laughs> we'll. <laughs> How important is this weekend? Um, you know, it's, I like to to try to think of every weekend as, as important. Um, I like to try to tell the guys that our next game is our biggest game, and I, I think there's some truth to that. I think that uh, uh, anytime, anytime you can get a win on the weekend is huge, but especially rolling into playoffs, this is a huge time for two really big games this weekend.
I would say the exact opposite. I, I think uh, when you first start it, you're like, oh man, like when's it over? And now I, I really, I really get to appreciate how how awesome it is to be on the road the road with these guys and and hanging out and just getting to be around the rink all day is, is a really special thing. That's been interesting about just starting to have the window is closing. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, you know, I, I'm just trying to, to take it all in. That's that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to play the best hockey I can play to give my team the best chance to win it a few games here and and getting to be in front of the crowd and, and taking that all in is is also on my mind. So that's that's probably how it's changed a little bit. What are some of the things you can take from past seasons during the playoff push that you can use this year? Um, I think uh, I've only because of COVID, I've only been in two playoff series, but um, the first one, obviously getting to win it all is huge. And I think last year, even losing was a, a big learning point. And I just think that it's just, it's different here in the South. So we're gonna have some, some good hard fought hockey. And I think we got a lot of guys with experience that's gonna help us push through and, and hopefully play our best hockey when it comes to it. I don't know. I, I let Supi likes to say that, that we're the team we need to focus on the most, but um, I always like, yeah, that's the coach's yeah. answer. But uh, which one would you really like to just talk to you? <laughs> all of them, all of them. No, um, I really like getting a battle with Lone Star. It's always a good, good, hard-fought battle, and um, those are always two really, really good games to watch. Any more questions, for Steelers? I got. Can I tell you a story? Real yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> Mr. Steelers or yep. oh yeah. Baseball game. Somebody played that song. Oh. First person that came to my mind. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad to I'm glad that I was thought of in that. <laughs> awesome. Anything else for Steelers? Thanks. Thank you, Chet. I hope you guys tune in this Friday and Saturday. Mudbucks are at Odessa to take on the Jacks. Until next time, Claws up.